What's up, everybody? Hi. And welcome to another episode of Team Chit Chat, oh, a, a subsidiary <laughs> of Team Chat. Shut up. This is sorry, my sorry. intro. We'll start again. <laughs> no, I'm not okay. starting over. <laughs> a subsidiary of Team, Ch- of Team Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Mogan, oh. joined to my left by Jared wow, Wilson. Wow, that feels so different, but I know, hi, right? how are you doing? It feels bad, doesn't it? It does. It's it feels like, weird. Go, to my left? No, it's to the right. Always. Also, I never say to my left. I always say to my good side because that's the good <laughs> hearing side. And on my good side, Jared Wilson. Uh, but yeah, welcome to Team Chit Chat, uh, the show that we do every now and then, yep, yep. <laughs> which is a special reward. You get these episodes one week early if you are one of our $5 tier patrons. Yep. Uh, we've got a couple of them floating around out there and we are very grateful and we love them very much. And Smooch that's going to be all of the emotion all of all of the intro we're doing today because i have a topic for us to talk about i'm excited about this one and it was very much piggybacking off of your previous topic of talking about childhood toys oh yeah yeah yeah. because as soon as we wrapped on that one that got me thinking about all of like the other childhood stuff that we all have stories about that we're always talking about but we've never put in any of the episodes yeah and that really dovetailed nicely with my recent kick of going to the library, <laughs> going to the Austin Public Library, and trying to find old childhood movies that I really loved when I was a kid yeah. that I feel like I haven't seen in at least 15 plus years because I feel like there's so much of that childhood like experience that you completely forget sure. or black out because right. it was traumatizing. <laughs> and that got me on the subject of today's topic, Childhood media that scarred you for life. Ooh. And I have a bunch of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. No. Because, yeah. I mean, you, you, you see like the threads and everything online of people being like, oh, dude, who remembers this? And it's crazy how many times something new will pop up and I'll be like, oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I do remember that, that. Now, it's interesting because I've realized that a lot of mine carry a very specific through line because I don't know how many other Zoomers out there might recall, uh, but every movie they made for children, yeah. air quotes, in the 80s specifically, <laughs> was the most traumatic, unhinged shit you've ever seen Just in your life. Just absolutely. And people wonder if people were doing drugs back then. Oh, oh totally. yeah. Like, yeah, they were. More what do you think this was? More than ever before. <laughs> but so, uh, so, so the first movie that sort of got me on this thread is one that I have been desperate to talk to people about because okay. it was, it, when I was a kid, it definitely scarred me for life. But upon rewatch as an adult, so good. Phenomenal. Oh really? Yeah, and it's not of what you know. I'll let you, you guess. You want me to guess? What do you think? What do you think it is? I'm gonna guess that it's since it was from you know your recent rewatches that you've been talking about yep. over on the yep. old Discord. It's, it's definitely Discord. mentioned in the Discord. Um, I'm not. I'm gonna say it's not Thumbelina. Oh no, Thumbelina! Traumatic in different ways because what a shit movie. I remember watching that one as a kid. And and even I as a kid, I was kind of like, it. it's okay, but this is kind of weird. Oh no! But then it's, I've it's, seen stuff since, and oof. then like. Uh, a TikTok and then your reviews of it. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I don't feel it's like I different. need to watch that one again. <laughs> but no, not um, scary, not, not traumatic. Okay, not like that. Um, Secret of Nim? Ooh, no, but I know that one does have a lot of scars for other 80s children. Okay. So no, but good guess. I'll give you another hint. It's not animated. It's not animated. Not animated. Oh. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. That narrows okay. down the list, doesn't it? And you've talked about it on this. I have. I at least mentioned it in passing in the Discord. I'm not sure if I made as big of a post about it like I did with Thumbelina. I feel like you're never going to guess yeah, it. Let's just go right into it. Let's go. It's Return to Oz. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I have not seen this, but this is one that I do know oh, is like just buddy. beyond weird. You have got... So actually, this one I didn't even have to rent. It's on Disney+. Plus. Oh, really? For insane reasons i don't know why they put why that movie on disney plus traumatize another generation but it's of kids, out you know? there and i would strongly recommend it to anybody and everybody because i think it does so many fascinating things but when i was a kid <laughs> and that's what this episode is about so the the premise of return to oz is it's based on the books so mm-hmm. a lot of people don't know that the wizard of oz is based on a book series it was really popular back in its heyday and there are actually quite a few installments so the second movie return to oz is sort of an amalgam of I think the second and third books. It's yeah. definitely not a faithful adaptation, but it sort of borrows parts from a bunch of different ones and cobbles them together into a cohesive movie, which is incredible. <laughs> Superior costume design, 
really creepy. I mean, they really, they swung for the fences with how well can we traumatize the children. Yeah. So this is the premise to Return to Oz. It is about a year, I think, maybe six months to a year after the tornado from the Wizard of Oz. So uh, Dorothy and her family are still rebuilding. Mm -hmm. So the house is still kind of halfway in shambles. They've only really managed to rebuild about half of it. Um, it's heavily implied that Uncle Joe... I might be thinking of the grandma. Aunt Dorothy. Aunt. Yeah, Joe is the granddad okay. of Willy Wonka, which... Uncle Frank? I mean, perfect. Uncle Fred. <laughs> One of those old-timey names, it does not matter. Her uncle has, like, low-key depression from their house being destroyed, so he's yeah. not really actively working on fixing up the house. So her aunt is, like, really put upon, and Dorothy won't stop talking about Oz. Mm. And of course, they think that she's just having like post traumatic stress. Right. They think she imagined this all up during the tornado. So they decide, since she's got terrible insomnia, she can't think, she can't sleep because all she can think about is Oz. They're like, okay, we have no other choice. We're going to have to take like a three day carriage ride to a mental facility to get Dorothy really early electroshock therapy. Oh, damn. And that entire scene is tr <laughs> so traumatizing. And this is a kid's movie. It, it's a kid's movie. Oh, my God. And the, 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 like, mansion, like, the facility they take her to is horrifying all on its own. There's a bunch of creepy shit going on. They're just, like, they put the machine on her. It's revving up. It's thunderstorming oh, outside. Damn. You're like, oh, my God, they're going to kill her. And then, thank God, uh, a thunder strike, a lightning strike zaps all the power out of the building. Okay. So she manages to escape while they're trying to deal with the power outage. She runs out into the night into a raging flooded river and she's accompanied by another girl and you're like, okay, something's up with this other girl. And presumably uh, the girl, the other girl drowns oh, and shit. Dorothy gets whisked away down the river back to Oz. Another natural disaster that sweeps her back <laughs> into Oz. So, okay, wow. I know, right? So she, so she gets flooded to Oz literally and then all of the water just kind of dries up and she's like oh never mind <laughs> and she's like <laughs> and she's in I just a, imagine I just this, imagine I guess. that and she's in a desert with her now talking chicken which is one of the best parts of the movie I love that chicken oh my anyways God. that is not we're not going to talk about the whole movie I'm going to skip ahead to the part that as a child uh -huh. scarred me for life so one of the early things that they do when they're back in Oz is they realize that something has gone wrong like the wizard has been basically dethroned mm -hmm. and Oz is in shambles because some creature called like the goblin king or something or maybe the Gollum King, doesn't matter, has taken over and everything is in ruins. Oz itself is like uh, the Emerald City is in ruins and it is currently being run by somebody named Princess Mombi. Dope ass name for Star Wars. That is. Sick name. Um, and when Dorothy gets to her palace, she doesn't really know that Princess Mombi is evil yet. Mm -hmm. So she just kind of walks right in with her chicken and the other friend that she's made along the way. And Princess Mombi is beautiful. She's sitting very regally dressed in her hall of mirrors, like Palace of Versailles-esque interior. She's playing this awesome sitar. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. And when Dorothy walks up to her, she just kind of like, is like, oh, okay, hello. And she stands up and she just sort of is like, come with me Dorothy and she escorts her back further into the palace and Dorothy's trying to explain like oh I need your help blah 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 and mommy's just like yeah yeah okay okay and eventually they get to a sort of like grandiose hall slash closet mm -hmm. where princess Mombi keeps all of her heads because she whatever type of creature she is she can just take her head off and put it in a glass case to sleep and then go pick any of the other ones and snap it right back on. What the fuck? And all of the heads are still alive. Like they sleep, they wake up, they look at Dorothy, they can all talk like they're fully sentient. So it's fucked up already. But that's not the part that that's scarred still me. Not it. So that's not the part that scarred <laughs> me for life because I didn't really remember the build up to yeah. it. All I remember is that at some point, once Dorothy and her friends do figure out that Princess Mombi is evil, they have to steal a key from her. But the key is with her original head in the closet hall of heads. So they have to break into one of those cases and get the key without waking the original head up because Princess Mombi sleeps headless. That seems like a that okay. seems like a choice, right? <laughs> it's like, wait, are you sure you don't want to wear one of those just in case? Right. Uh, so they have to break in. They have to try to steal the key. And as they do so, of course, 
something gets knocked over, a sound happens, and as soon as that sound wakes all of the other heads up, they all start shrieking. They all start start screaming horrendously, and that's the part that scarred that. me for life. Oh, it was terrible. Like, looking back, it's actually not that bad, but when I was a kid, I was like, oh, because that's the only part of the movie I remembered. Yeah. That was it, because that scarred me so bad that just the whole rest of the movie got blacked out. Gross. Oh, I mean, that just terrible. sounds like, it, currently playing Bloodborne, there's like a part where I have to go, and it's just like these ghost apparitions of women, and they just like scream as they attack you and it's this whole area is just screaming and that's terrifying oh yeah in and of itself but as a kid seeing a hall literal closet full of uh heads. heads yeah screaming and coming alive and just like and i'm assuming they were like in terror right oh yeah I, and then the screaming of the heads does wake up princess Mombi's body oh, no. which is now chasing dorothy headless until it can get back to its original oh, head and put it back on oh it was terrible so that's that's one of my formative childhood memories of a movie Ooh. that scarred me for life but upon rewatch Excellent actually film. good actually okay. good 10 out of 10 would recommend it stars the very very young Firuza Balk I don't know who that you is. might know you might recognize her from the uh, movie the craft she's like the, seen the craft. never mind Jared that's actually Other been one people will know that's actually been on our list and Sam and I've talked about watching oh, the craft actually man, quite right. a, quite a few times recently you... uh, we just haven't actually gotten I to feel it. like maybe you would recognize her anyways because she has a very distinct look um, that's a pretty good one. Like, that's what she looked like, kind of Circa the Craft. Oh. I feel like she was in okay, other stuff. I know, I know who that is. But I, the, I recognize her. Yeah. I just didn't know her by name. The Craft is the one that most people my age know her from. Sure. But when she was like 10 or 12, she was Dorothy in Return to Oz. Huh. Cra and also, what a talented young actress. Yeah. Young Anakin could never... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. What about you? All right, so one of mine, uh, this is one that I had a couple. Of, I've I actually had a few, <laughs> but like, I don't know if I'll go through all of them. It was just like as I was, I was like had ideas also, coming we can to do my a head. Lightning round at the uh, end, yeah. But the big one that really stood out to me as one that just absolutely scarred me, and and, and I think it was too because it was so unexpected for me at the time. I don't remember how old I was. I had to be under 10. Probably I'm going to say eight to 10 years old. Uh, and we had watched as, you know, as a family growing up, we had seen the Indiana Jones movies oh. and they were fine and we liked them. They were fun action adventure movies and stuff like that. Even, even the temple of doom. We did not watch temple of doom. We were Ooh, not allowed to watch I that. I think one. I know where this one's going, <laughs> but okay. we did. And one of my favorite, because we watched uh, the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and right. I loved it. Oh, yeah. I, you know, fantastic, fun, fun action movies. Uh, and even at the end of that one, as everyone knows, when they open up the, ra the the Ark of the Covenant and the angels come out, turn to demons, and then, you know, melt the zombies. I mean, speaking melt the of Nazis. screaming heads, right? Like yeah, pretty much the exact same thing. Um, well, you know, as I'm talking about it, I think both of these scenes from the Indiana Jones movies, because I, I don't know, like that one, I feel like looked pretty fake even for me as a little kid when they do melt i mean it looks cool and everything <laughs> quotes and cool but it looks cool hey, it does, look, it does cool. look cool i think it's very uh, cool <laughs> but you know i think i was able to be like oh yeah sure it looks like uh you know movie magic, movie magic. stage makeup but the villain's death in the last crusade Oh, the villain's death in the last crusade. scarred the ever loving shit out of me. I'm not sure I really remember. Like I've seen that movie many times, but I'm not sure I you really don't remember, remember the it. scene. Describe it. Okay. Paint so me a anyway, picture with words. Opening credits. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> take if us we, through if the whole we movie. sit here for an hour <laughs> as you walk us through Indiana Jones and the last crusade. No. Oh uh, my anyway, God. So, you know, the whole point of that one is Indy is on the hunt for the Holy Grail. Uh, he's been hired by Walter Donovan, who, you know, it's been a while since I've seen it, but he's actually, um, I'm completely blanking on the actor's name all of a sudden, but he plays General Veers in The Empire Strikes Back oh. in Star Wars. And he also is Grand Maester, the Grand Maester of King's Landing in uh, Game of Thrones, the really old guy oh, who, okay. like, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, so Julian Sands, that's. No, he's dead. He's dead. Uh, well, it's he's Julian. dead now. He may not have been during no, Game of Thrones. No, it's Julian something. I'm here. He's got it pulled up. What? Why can I look at this dude? Uh, who plays him? Julian Glover. Julian okay, I was Glover. close. You were close. I was close. Good try. Julian Glover. Um, so anyway, 
they go through all the traps. They're in Petra in Jordan. Right. That's where this one. This I one remember ends. that. The uh, cups. The I remember cups. the cups. You know, they got to pick yes. all the cups. Okay, but that's cups. what it is. The knight in there, you know, tells them like, "You must pick the cup of Christ." And there's all the right. cups and everything. So Donovan goes first, and he's like, "Oh, well, obviously it has to be the and cup of kings," wrong. and he yeah. chooses wrong. Well, when he doesn't at this one, you know, the Nazis melted. He ages rapidly. Oh yeah, ages and and like completely like decomposes like he to desiccates. dust. Yeah, but he That's but it totally right. like so shows him like he drinks and it's like oh it's fine it's fine and then he like slowly realizes something's wrong. He grabs the uh, girl Elsa who's like the you know indie the love, love interest, interest slash in this one turncoat villain. Oh, yeah. uh, you know and but we when he grabs queen, her girl boss. <laughs> when he grabs her and looks at her he suddenly like you know the skin he like looks like the crypt keeper all of a sudden his hair like grows super long and then falls oh, out and his yeah. skin gets wrinkly and his eyes like bulge and pop and it was and i remember me being like <gasps> it's just like <laughs> just like mouth agape like what the fuck is happening <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I would rewatch The Last Crusade because I love that one. Because it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Sean Connery and they're, they're, and Indiana and uh, Harrison Ford, their like, chemistry together is fantastic. That whole movie, their banter. Love it. Uh, but every time that scene would come on, for the longest time, I could not watch it. Oh, my God. Uh, it was terrifying. I can absolutely relate because it wasn't originally on my list, but the heart ripping out scene in Temple of Doom. Oh, yeah. That was a scarred me for life. I definitely, I remember I watched... Temple of Doom much later in life. Like I think once I was living here in Austin and oh, stuff like that. You would and have I been watched, fucked up and like I me. watched it and I was like, <laughs> no, this is one that I actually agree with mom and dad on this one. We, yeah, we shouldn't have watched this. Watch. No, <laughs> we shouldn't have watched this. <laughs> it was good. I liked it oh, now, yeah. but I could see like, no, as a kid, I understand this one probably would have crossed a few lines. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> good choice, uh, but though. yeah, but that one is, I have to say is the ultimate just like, Oh fuck. Like scared me that I still remember my first reaction to. And literally it would be like, I remember third, fourth time after, cause we rewatched movies a lot growing up. Uh, and again, it's a great fucking movie. Uh, but watching it and just like hands over my eyes and oh then just like God. three, four times later and then finally being like, okay, can I, can, I, look? I can watch it this time. <laughs> like, <laughs> pulling my fingers apart and looking through them and kind of watching it and being like, okay, I did it that time. And then next time oh watching God. it again. It was Jared. scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is very scary though. Um, so oh, I'm going to go through my next three pretty okay. rapid fire because I think people will all be well enough familiar with these that it's not going to, I don't have to explain it. Nobody fucking remembers Return to Oz. Yeah. So the next three are classic 80s films, Labyrinth. Oh, I have not seen that one either. Cherry. I know. That's inexcusable. I know. Okay, anyways, Labyrinth. Well, now I have to explain it. I know, it's just fine. Kidding, just <laughs> I know there's some weird shit that happens in that movie, and I've always heard it. And plus, it's already like the Jim Henson weird Muppets, oh, yeah. like Dark Crystal. And, and a lot of, and uh, so, so actually, the next one was going to be the Dark Crystal. So, Which? Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, and Never Ending Story oh. all had specific scenes that scarred me for life. So, with Labyrinth, it's the one kind of in the beginning ish where what's her name protagonist is first getting Jennifer into Jennifer Connolly. Jennifer Connolly, yes. Yeah. That, my, but my I don't bad. know her character. Yeah, I don't remember. Sarah. Sarah? Oh, okay. I think it's sure. Sarah. She has a very normal <laughs> name. It's like Sarah or Jennifer or something. I think it's Sarah. Uh, and Sarah is first getting into the labyrinth, sort of the first-ish friend that she meets is like the big lumbering woolly mammoth slash yeti slash orangutan creature. Yeah. It's a big sort of amorphous. It most looks like an orangutan, I guess you would say, but like with tusks. It's a very friendly giant. It's not actually evil, but when she first comes upon it, it is strung up by its legs and little creatures are all around it tormenting it because they've got these little like heads on spikes that like have teeth that chomp. What the fuck? So they're like biting the poor creature with these with these horrible heads that bite and that specific scene yeah, scarred sounds, me for that a while. That sounds terrifying. Uh, that was terrifying. So that was my labyrinth scene in uh, Dark Crystal. It's a really obvious one. I feel like a lot of people maybe got scarred for life by this but the scene where like one of the bird people gets turned on by the other bird people People, so they back him into a corner and rip all of his feathers out. And then they all just kind of back what away. And, and yeah, yeah, the movies are messed what up, the dude. Fuck? Those movies are <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> 
and then with the never ending story actually I realized like way too late that he's not scary at all yeah but in the never ending story just like the white dragon creature I think his name is maybe Falcor or something like that mm -hmm. I feel like it's Falcor I didn't look this up beforehand I'm going oh by. yeah the big like yeah, dog creature yeah 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 the yeah, big yeah, yeah, dragon yeah. dog mm -hmm. creature who is friendly I'm pretty sure you're right, and yeah. good but when I was a kid I guess just his design just scared the shit out I mean, of me yeah yeah so it's a I little, it's a little creepy couldn't watch the never ending story uh, well I, I could because I obviously did and yeah. I, I did just fine uh, but it scarred me for life and then Dark Crystal was a horror show that I will never watch again <laughs> <laughs> and Labyrinth is fantastic, but it had a couple of scenes that really scared the crap out of me. Oh, so those man. are my child the eighties, man. See, in all three of those like I have not to. seen. I have to I have to catch up on some of this stuff. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make a controversial opinion. Okay. I think you can skip Dark Crystal. Unless, That's kind of like unless Labyrinth are, I have an interest in yeah. because of David Bowie. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, and he's looking and yeah. and he's looking hot in that movie oh, wait, too. Jareth? Jarek? Jareth. I Jareth, think that's right. Yeah, Goblin he has some sort of King, stupid like douchebag name. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but the, okay. So my other ones very quickly too that I'll run through. Uh, but you talking about that one actually reminded me one. I have not seen the full movie because I want to say this is one that we actually walked, did not finish in the theater. Oh, you walked out? Uh, well, not my choice. Controversial. It was, it was parents' choice. Oh. Uh, but do you remember the movie? Again, I couldn't even tell you I don't think what happened in the scene because I was so little when we saw this. But do you remember the movie We're Back? Oh, yeah. A Dinosaur, Dinosaur Tale. Movie, yeah. Okay. Whatever happens when they first get to the circus and then like the evil guy like is. with the cages? Yes. Yeah. Like, that like, scene was messed we up. Out oh, yeah. So quick. I, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> I don't. But that, that one didn't make my list, but I did think about it yeah. because I remember being pretty scared of that movie, too. And now I've seen of since then and we never saw the rest of the movie. But then since then, I have seen like on TikTok or whatever the uh, the ending when the like Dr. Screw Eye or whatever is killed. And that part's kind of like fucking terrifying, too. I all crows descend on him and all that's left is just his like bolt eye oh god it's terrifying <laughs> what, uh, what so, were they doing I, back I, then i don't fucking know oh my it's god. crazy uh okay but the other ones that i had were uh brave little toaster <gasps> oh that's a good one the, specifically the scene where the vacuum eating cord scene no not that oh. one the one that always got me is it is when uh the toaster has the dream of like the little boy making toast and then the black is like toaster cat the toast catches on fire and there's the big like smoke monster thing that grabs the little kid then a huge terrifying fireman clown pops out of the of the smoke with like huge like uh, spiky teeth and everything oh. and it leans like really close into the camera close up on its face and just goes run as like smoke comes out of its teeth oh my god Fucking horrifying. and then like it proceeds to like spray its water hose after the little toaster who runs and the water turns into a cascading wave of forks that go flying and hit the toaster causing like electrical like damage of like what you happen then cut to the toaster being like jumping off a ledge and like getting caught by its cord it changes perspective. The toaster is hanging above a bathtub full of water oh and then God. falls into it. And you see like sparks and things go crazy everywhere. I did not remember that scene very well. I just rewatched it today oh to, re to reacclimate <laughs> myself. And I was honestly like, why the fuck did I re-traumatize myself? That is pretty, that is super fucked up. That entire movie was fucked up. Absolutely crazy. Uh, another one that I have that I had uh, a couple quick ones. Uh, the, are you afraid of the dark show? Which I know already a mm. horror show but there was one episode specifically that i remember where like a boy goes down into his basement and there's like a closet or maybe a tv that turns on and he sees like a commercial for a carnival and the ringmaster of the carnival or circus or whatever is like saying hey come on kids come have a good time and the kids are like yeah that sounds great as and most goes kids and would. gets close <laughs> to the tv to watch when the uh ringmaster reaches through the tv grabs the kid and, and the kid like obviously like jerks back in fear and when he jerks back that pulls the ringmaster out more and he's just a skeleton <sighs> and he's like like, like oh my freaking. god and i was like what the fuck this shit is crazy but yeah <laughs> the things they were putting on tv for children and then the last thing and it wasn't even and this was kind of an on me scarring for life kind of thing because it wasn't a movie it was a book actually uh but like i'm always saying that books are for chumps they are this for is chumps why, people. this is why uh, it was actually, and then again, the the it was one on like the mysteries of the unexplained or unexplained mysteries, which on its own, fascinating so stuff. So the book form of mysteries at the museum. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Cool. And, huh. and everything like that. But of course, one of the sections, and I was absolutely convinced that this was going to happen to me, spontaneous human combustion. Just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like talking about stories of that and everything. And of course, there were pictures of like the the shoes at the bottom of the chair and then just the ashy remains in the seat. And I was oh, just like, I good God, how can we prevent this? <laughs> What's science doing? My God. <laughs> Science isn't doing enough to protect us from spontaneously combusting. <laughs> what is the U.S. government doing with my tax money? <laughs> Again, I was probably around ten or whatever. Oh my god! When, or younger when I when I was not oh younger, boy. but around ten, and I was just like, "What? No, this can happen!" <laughs> oh my god, Jared, <laughs> that's hysterical. Oh, but no, that's a that's just I guess uh, some of the highlights of childhood trauma. <laughs> I have known for a long time that you're afraid of sharks. That you're afraid of spiders. Spiders I, is again. I got bit on the ass by a brown recluse. Understandable. I didn't realize spontaneous combustion <laughs> was in the mix. It's also in the mix. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? You know, Fantastic. it's a lot of shit to be scared about there. And apparently, our childhood media does uh, the best oh, job man. of really <laughs> ironing those tra- it traumas. It really home. does. And I know that many of our listeners are somehow even more fucked up than us. <laughs> So so we absolutely want to hear about your traumatic childhood media events, be it movies, shows, books, what have you. Whatever you got. Leave us a comment on the video. Put it in the Discord. We would love to hear that. Obviously, as you've heard with Jarrett's, it's absolutely hilarious. (laughs) Whatever your trauma is, we definitely want to hear it. So thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Team Chit Chat, and we will see you next time.